Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're gonna to talk about coronary calcium scoring, also known as the Heart Saver CT. I often use the Heart Saver CT in my practice, and let's talk about patients that should and shouldn't be considered for Heart Saver CT scans. The first way that I consider whether someone's a good candidate for the Heart Saver CT is by using the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk calculator. I'll link that below so that you can do it as well to give a 10 year risk score. The score is given as a percentage and this is thought to be your 10 year risk of developing cardiovascular disease such as heart attacks or strokes. People with a calculated risk of greater than 15% really aren't the best candidates for coronary calcium scores because they already should be on a moderate to high dose of a cholesterol lowering medication like a statin. And for those patients that have a 10 year calculated risk of less than 5%, it's really thought to not be all that helpful because they're probably not gonna have a really high calcium score. Although there are times in which I'm surprised. So really the only patients that I don't do it for are the ones that already should be using a, a medication like a statin and already should be doing aggressive lifestyle modifications. So those patients include patients with diabetes, patients that have had a heart attack or stroke already. They already should be on cholesterol-lowering medications like statins, they already should have their blood pressure under really good control, and they already should be doing lifestyle changes to help keep their weight under control. So a coronary calcium score or a heart saver CT is really easy to do. It's basically getting a CAT scan, which does not involve any IV contrast. It doesn't involve taking any medications at all. It exposes you to about the same amount of radiation that you would get if you get a mammogram. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, so once you get your heart saver CT or coronary calcium score, I strongly encourage you to talk about it with your doctor. You'll receive something called an Agatston score, or I just consider that the coronary calcium score, and that can be as low as zero or greater than 400. Lower scores are better and indicate less amounts of atherosclerotic plaque within the arteries of the heart. After you get that coronary calcium score, then they'll put you in a percentile ranking based on your age and your sex. So let's say your percentage rank was 75%. That means that 25% of people got a score worse than you and 74% got a better score. Let's look specifically at three very different patients that I ordered coronary calcium scoring on. The first is a 62 year old man. His 10 year risk was 10%, but his total cholesterol was 251 and he was really reluctant to be placed on a statin. So I got a coronary calcium score on him and his coronary calcium score was 211. Well, that's a, a pretty high score and his percentile rank was 75%. For someone like him, I actually recommended cholesterol lowering medication like a statin. And also for him, whenever I see a coronary calcium score greater than 200, I also talk to patients about the benefits of taking baby aspirin at least until the age of 70, because the benefits of taking baby aspirin outweigh the bleeding risks in patients that have a coronary calcium score of 200 or greater. The next patient that I ordered one on was a 70 year old female. Her total cholesterol was over 300 and her LDL was 192. Patients that have an LDL cholesterol greater than 190 are automatically supposed to be placed on a cholesterol lowering medication but she really didn't want to. And I calculated her 10 year risk and she calculated to be about eight or 9%. So I got a coronary calcium score thinking that it was probably gonna be pretty high and that would encourage her to go on a cholesterol lowering medication. To my surprise, her coronary calcium score was 0.57, which is low and her percentile ranking was between 25 to 50%. Her percentile ranking was higher than what I expected because she's older. She was still considered very low risk, so we did not actually start a cholesterol-lowering medication on her. And then lastly, I ordered a coronary calcium score on a 43-year-old male who had a really strong, positive family history of heart attacks and strokes and his 10 year risk was only 2%, but he wanted to do all that he could to really lower his risk 
for cardiovascular disease. His coronary calcium score came out to 10.1, but because he's so young, that put him in the 75th percentile, which isn't great. So we ended up putting him on a cholesterol lowering medication. And I actually talked with him about going on a GLP-1 medication, semaglutide, also known as Wagovi or Ozempic, because his BMI was greater than 30. And I really wanted to do all that I could to lower all of his risk factors. At the end of the day, I think coronary calcium scores can be really helpful when you're trying to decide for those middle of the road patients. It's really not for patients that are really high risk already because they should already be on those medications. And so there's really no need to get extra data. However, there are some patients in that it's very motivating. So if they see a high coronary calcium score, that's motivating for them to lose weight to continue to take the statin, to continue to take their blood pressure medication. So I'm open to those patients as well in specific situations. I hope this was helpful. Remember that I am a physician, but I'm not your physician. And it's really important if you're interested in getting a coronary calcium score, or if you've already gotten one, to talk about the results with your physician. Thanks for joining me.